All right, Stock Buster fans, continuing with this uh, 32 Drive-In cult classics movie collection, we're going to watch something called The Sister-in-Law. Let's check it out. All right, the guy with his back turns is Ed Strong. This is obviously some sort of mafia deal here. We don't know what yet. We'll find out soon enough. This lovely lady in the purple bikini is Joanna. She's married to Ed, the guy we just saw doing the deal. This is the only film she ever did. And this is Robert Strong, her brother-in-law, who's just come home after a long travel. She, she just dropped her towel. So the three of them go out to eat, and she starts playing footsie with his crotch. Anything wrong? No. Clearly Joanna wants her brother-in-law, and somehow they end up in a hotel together. There's no nudity or sex in this scene, but it's certainly implied. Anyway, the next day... Ed brings by another I woman. Excuse. This is Deb. I believe that's Edward's mistress. Good, isn't he? Good and bad. Edward and I taught each other quite a lot. That I'm sure of. And she's cool with it, apparently. The only reason I bring up Edward's prowess is because I think enough for any woman. I don't like it being rude to the boys. Some thugs it's pay Ed a visit. Can't come. You know, you keep causing trouble like that. You'll be hanging around all the time. And we can make things very difficult. What kind of man to have two women fighting over? Yep, the girls are now fighting in the pool. <laughs> but that night, Joanna... And Robert get it on yet again, outside by the pool after doing some skinny dipping, which, fortunately, I couldn't show you. Deb and Robert are now hanging out. So he's doing his brother's wife and his brother's mistress. Robert leaves Ed with Deb and goes right home to Robert's wife. He's a gangster now, is what he accused him of being. What would you do? Pick up this package for me. Deliver it. It's important. No. I'm just driving to Canada, man. It's only a box of jewels. Nonetheless, he does convince, convince Robert to do the job for him. Robert's picking up the package now. You know what it costs? Yep. You know what time? Be there. He and Deb decide to open up the package to look at the jewels themselves. But those aren't jewels. It's heroin. Well, he says screw that, and he and Deb decide to go dump the shit. He now owes three hundred thousand dollars. Well, Benjo, 
I'll get you the 300,000. When? Tell them to give me a word. She thinks she can get the money for him. Thanks. I'm going to see my agent this afternoon. Maybe I can get some money off of him. I'll get you father to coast He won't do it. He's a dirty, suspicious little man. I mean, he'll do it. What makes you think so? He then spots his brother walking down the street with Deb. Anyway, the cooler heads prevail. They discuss it. They decide to part ways. He gives him a car to leave with. As he and Deb are leaving, they get run off the road. the end of Robert. Our last scene in the movie is Ed and Joanna walking through an airport, I guess. They're going somewhere. All right, let's talk about The Sister-in-Law, which is a re-review from my previous channel. I have it available on this uh, Drive-In Cult Classics 32 movie collection. Um, they made four of these, actually, and there was eight movies in each one. And they combine them all into one giant 32 box set, which is what this one here is. That's where I have it. I have it twice, actually. I do have the 8 one, too. But anyway, the movie itself came out in 1972, I believe. Uh, stars John Savage, who uh, actually went on to do a lot of things. Um, I reviewed a movie that he did called The Killing Kind, which I really like. About the same time period. He actually sang, like, three of the songs on the soundtrack, too. Anyway, he plays Robert. I'm sorry. Yeah, he plays Robert. He comes home to... Uh, his brother-in-law's house, I think it's, or is it their dad's house, I don't know, but he comes back home, he's been on the road for a while, just traveling through America, seeing the sights, that sort of thing, and he runs into, when he comes back home, uh, his his sister-in-law, uh, Joanna. Joanna and uh, his brother, or Robert's brother, Edward, live there as well, so um, right away, uh, Joanna starts coming on to him, teasing him, dropping her towel in front of him. Um, Edward comes home, but later on, she keeps teasing him, and pretty soon, they end up sleeping together, and apparently uh, they're both Robert, I'm sorry, both uh, Edward and Joanna are okay with this, and they don't really mind. Um, Edward also has a mistress. Uh, her name is Deb. He brings Deb over one day, and uh, she hangs out at the pool with them, and um, uh, Joanna doesn't mind that he's sleeping with Deborah. Next thing you know, uh, Robert is also sleeping with Deborah. They're all getting around. So everybody's sleeping with everybody, basically. The only thing that's not happening is the brothers aren't sleeping together with each other, and the girls aren't sleeping together with each other either. So, But anyway, uh, Edward uh, has this side deal where he's smuggling what he says are jewels. He's involved with the mafia. He's just smuggling these jewels across the border into Canada. Um, and for whatever reason, he can't do this one day, so he asks his brother to do it for him. And his brother's like, uh-uh, I ain't doing that. What are you talking about? You're, what are you, a gangster now? But anyway, he does convince him to do it. Um, he goes to meet the guy, picks up the jewels. Uh, he's going along with Deb, by the way. And then Deb and uh, Robert decide to look through, through the bag to see, see the jewels for themselves. It turns out it's not jewels at all. It's heroin. So now he's supposed to smuggle these drugs across the Canadian border. That changed things for him. He didn't want any part of that. So he and Deb went out in the woods and just chucked it all into a stream and just blew all the heroin away. So he tells his brother about it. His brother's not happy, but what can you do at this point? His brother's freaking out because he's now going to be out $300,000 that he owes these mafia guys. He's scared to death. Um, he finds his brother and roughs him up a little bit, but they, they decide to... Um, uh, cooler heads prevail, like I said when I was reviewing this, and uh, he gives him a car and lets him go. Now, I don't know if he was setting him up or what, but as he and Deb are leaving, they get run off the road by the gangsters, including the one that he picked up the drugs from originally. Um, and then one of the guys shoots him three times, actually several times, and kills him right there on the road. The last scene we see in the movie are, are Ed and Joanna walking through an airport. I guess they're headed somewhere, and they've kind of gotten away scot-free with this, or I should say Ed got away with it, and that's the movie. So, anyway, uh, it's actually not a bad film. It's just yeah, it's actually very. It's actually a pretty good film, actually. It's got some nudity thrown in, just a lot of swinger stuff going on here. These couples are just very free and open. I guess that was the late sixties, early seventies. I guess um, I don't know, but anyway, um, the actress who played Joanna, her thing, her name was Anne Saxon. Apparently, there's some thought that this might be uh, an alias name she used because there's no record of her doing anything else, and uh, so who knows what. But anyway, that's it. I was was curious about the mafia. You know, uh, obviously the heroin is gone. This guy owes him $300,000. Obviously, 
they're mad about it as the mafia, so they decide to kill him, or, or kill his brother, I guess, in this case. But what does that serve them, by the way? It's, it's, I guess it sends a message maybe to anybody else, but probably not a whole lot of people even knew about this drug deal. And by killing him, they're assuring themselves that they will never get another penny of that 300000 they owe them. So, I don't know. It's a strange system. But anyway, that's it. It is the sister-in-law. I think this is available. In fact, I know it isn't. I know it's available on a standalone DVD. Uh, I saw it online for like $29.99. Or you can get the uh, eight uh, Drive-In Cult Classics box set. So you get seven other movies for $29.99 also. So I will leave a link uh, to that one down below. Or if you want, you can get the uh, 32 one here, which is uh, about $45 on Amazon. Um, if you look at my previous review uh, for uh, The Stepmother, I have the... Um, uh, this one linked on there. But anyway, yeah, if you do that, it's $45, but you get 32 movies. So that's a pretty good deal, like a buck fifty a piece. So anyway, that's it. It's the sister-in-law. Has anybody else seen the sister-in-law besides me? Curious. Let me know. Leave some comments. Watch it. Bye.